Question 3 on waves and interference. We've got Abby Ben and Charlotte using two-way radios on a tramping trip. The radios transmit waves with a frequency of 4.80 times 10 to the 5 kilohertz. It's unusual just to note this, that you've got a, a number in standard form um, as well as having the kilohertz modifier with a, with a K um, because you could have just said that's 4.80 times 10 to the 8 hertz. Anyway, assume the speed of light in air is 3.8 times 10, uh, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Um, calculate the wavelength of the radio waves. This is using the wave equation V equals F lambda, and we're after lambda. So wavelength equals uh, V divided by F. The velocity of waves was given as 3.0 times 10 to the 8 divided by um, the frequency. Um, and there's definitely no little hints and clues and extra bits. So this is a straightforward question. This would be an achieved level question, I'd imagine. 4.80 times 10 to the 8. I suppose that is a trick, isn't it? Because the kilohertz means um, it's an actual, you know, you have to include that as your modifier. So maybe there's a little trick into that. Um, and you just plug those numbers in and you get whatever you calculate. I'm not going to go through that. Final answer should be whatever it is to 2SF because you're only given the speed of light to two significant figures. So your final answer in multiplication and division questions goes to the least number of significant figures. B. The radio waves are created by electrons oscillating in the aerial. So electrons uh, moving back and forward uh, in two different directions. Um, find the distance travelled by the radio wave during the time an electron completes one oscillation. Okay, that sounds a little bit tricky, sounds a little bit crazy. But remember, um, you've got velocity as distance over time. We've got the velocity of the radio wave, which is that speed of light up there. Um, and we're trying to find D. So all we need is T, the time period, or the amount of time it takes... Um, during one oscillation of an electron. Remember the electrons are vibrating back and forward at this frequency up here. So you know the frequency, you just need to know the period of a single oscillation. And we've got this lovely formula, the period equals 1 over the frequency. Um, so that will give us the time T for one oscillation. In this case we can substitute capital T into this equation and use that as the period. But we need to rearrange it so we'll have the distance travelled will equal velocity times that time period. Um, and then if we wanted to um, change the equation slightly, we would say uh, substitute 1 over the frequency in here. So V times 1 divided by the frequency, or just V over F. Um, so the distance travelled is the velocity over the frequency. You can plug those numbers in yourself, 4.8, uh, sorry, 3.0, times 10 to the 8 goes in there, and the frequency goes in there. Plug the numbers in, calculate it, see what you get. Don't forget that, um, that it's times 10 to the 5, and it's also kilohertz, so it's times 10 to the 8. That's what you should have. Question C. C is an interesting one. We've got uh, Abby and Ben 21 metres apart, both the radios sending up waves that overlap as shown in the diagram below. Um, so we're assuming at the, these central locations here is where uh, Abby and Ben are, one at one place, one at the other. The darker circles represent the crest of the radio waves, and Charlotte walks in a line from X to Y, and then from Y to Z. So that way, and then that way, but along those lines. Describe and explain, so it's two things. One is describe, one is explain, how the strength of the radio waves her radio receives varies as she walks. So um, this is a very classic interference question. Um, as she's traveling from X to Y, describe what happens. Well, you're going to be crossing over uh, region. This is the explain part, actually, but we'll just say what it is. So describe for the first part. It's going to be um, it's the strength of the radio receives of the radio waves. So the strength will increase and then decrease and then increase and then decrease as she walks across. So alternating increasing and decreasing. Um, the explanation is because she is traveling through regions of constructive and then destructive interference and then constructive again then destructive as she's traveling across that line. And if you wanted to get into more detail you'd talk about what leads to constructive interference 
um, which is equal path length um, and whole number of so not necessarily equal whole number of wavelength path uh, whole number of wavelength path difference for the waves that are coming from the two sources. Okay, you can get and destructive leads to an odd number of half wavelengths, so that the two wave sources are providing at that location out of phase addition. So the peak cancels the press. Anyway, next part is y to z. So travelling down in that second part, the describe part. Um, I, I should just you know we did cover that. Yep, um, the describe part is um, that should uh, it appears to be equal distance. I think that was mentioned. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the x, y, x to z line is an equal distance at every single point along there from the two sources. And what that means is there is a zero path difference. So zero wavelength path difference. Um, which means she'll have the same maximum strength signal all the way down that line and that's because it's constructive and it's a line of constructive interference there's the n equals zero um, fringe if you'd like to talk about it in terms of that and um, you've got zero as I've said zero path difference um, uh, wavelength so um, that's what you would describe, it's the same maximum strength signal all the way through and your explanation is that there's zero path difference leading to constructive interference uh, all the way down, which is a strong signal. Okay, last question, D. Better go to a different colour for D. Um, Abby is standing on the opposite side of a wall to Ben. There's a gap in the wall, as shown in the diagram below. I guess you could think about that as two walls then, one there and one there. Abby's radio can receive a signal from Ben's radio even though she cannot see him and even though radio waves are unable to penetrate the wall so uh, you're assuming that there's radio waves going around the wall in some way or other or over the wall probably not under the wall okay explain this observation using correct physics terms you may use a diagram the diagram above is kind of good enough um, this is also a very classic question <clears throat> and there are a number of things to consider um, because it's quite open-ended it's a higher level question and you should be thinking about uh, comparing and contrasting because there are two um, situations here okay identifying the two is the first thing and then comparing them and then contrasting them so um, we, we've got bolded we've got a radio signal so a signal radio radio signal that's one set of waves and we've got she cannot see him so that's light visible light waves so the two things are radio electromagnetic radiation and visible light and only one of those is bending around the wall or finding the gap and going through now visible light is not so this is a this is a contrast um, we might say that radio waves uh, bend around the wall and light no and doesn't bend I'm trying to find a short way to note this but okay my writing is awful but you get the idea um, so and they're both electromagnetic radiation so that's a comparison um, but only one of them will bend okay so that's just making this whole question really clear now the big reason is why so why is this the case this is our explanation why do radio waves bend and not white, uh, light? Visible light, because radio waves are light, but just not visible. Um, and it all comes back to uh, the, the wavelength. So this is a wavelength issue. Okay, the shorter wavelengths of visible light, so this is another contrast or a comparison depending on how you look at it, um, light has short wavelength and radio has long wavelength. Those longer wavelengths are able to bend around uh, the wall 
and make it to the receiver of the radio. That's pretty much the whole thing. And the visible light rays are too short in wavelength to do this. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Simple, eh? Um, we'll leave it there, I guess.